Level Up is a regular podcast that brings you topics to help you perform at work and in life at your very highest level. Your host is Dan Kyoto, an executive coach, corporate trainer, and author. He is president of Impact Training and Executive Coaching. And now, here's Dan. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. And here we are on Level Up, the place to go when you want to grow. So we talked to so many professionals, and I know you're going to enjoy the professional that we have today. First, I want to tell you a little bit about a question I was asked. I had a new person come to me because I'm an executive coach, and the person said, can we talk about my life as well as work? And I said, we should be talking about your life because it's all about the person not just the work that they do. And that's what's so great about our guest today, because we'll be addressing some things that go beyond work, other things. And I think you're going to enjoy her. She's one of those people that you just love to be around. She's been in the real estate career for 16 years, and not just a realtor, but also a broker and works with so many people to sell them homes or list their homes. And those people will tell you that it's a real connection. It's not just the, the interaction of the real estate part of it, but it's her. It's what she does for their lives, and she really gets to know them. So that's wonderful. But the exciting part is, what if you open up a new chapter? What if you get into an area that is, well, not new to you, because even in the real estate field, she would actually do weekly meetings and I know talk about some of these things about the person, not just what they do. And uh, she also has been on the Agent Leadership Council. But that's the real estate part. This part is all about something else. And it's about her next chapter. It's encouraging others to live extraordinary lives and get beyond fear, limiting beliefs, and comfort zones. So she believes that following curiosity and new experiences leads to amazing adventures. And that's what we want to talk about today. She'll tell us about her websites and blogs. And here's something she said that I I really highlighted. I love this. We can be healthy and vibrant at any age. So I am ready to listen to this. Cindy Moore is our guest today. And I'd like to welcome you, Cindy. Thank you for doing our Level Up podcast. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for inviting me to share. I'm excited to be here. Well, I want you to start where you want to, and uh, maybe, though, we should talk about the fact that you're going to be featured in Woman's World. Is that right? Talk a little bit about that. I love that. Yes, that's right. In fact, the magazine will be hitting the newsstand somewhere between today and June the 12th. And that uh, magazine, Woman's World magazine, approached me. They found my Instagram site, and they uh, knew I had a connection with Anthony William, who writes about the amazing healing powers in celery juice. And so I was approached to share about my healing story. And not only did I share my healing story, but I shared that my mother, who will be 80 years old this year, had joined me in that healing journey. And we took it together. And uh, we both healed from a host of ailments and illnesses. We both lost weight. We restored our vibrancy. We had a trip to Europe planned in 2017, and we wanted to be healthy enough to enjoy that and and also have the energy to enjoy that. And so we entered into this healing journey together, and the result was that it was just beyond our expectations. Uh, Many, many ailments healed, and uh, chronic pain that I had suffered with for 22 years disappeared for the first time, probably in my adult life, I felt really, really well, euphoric even, because I didn't know what healthy felt like. I had never experienced what really genuine health felt like. And so the magazine was excited to share our story, and that will be appearing sometime in the next few days. Uh, You can look for it at the grocery store or wherever you shop for magazines. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Let's talk a little bit about you never knew what a healthy life looked like. And so talk about that euphoria when 
you finally found something that helped you. Yes, I'd be glad to. I didn't realize that many of the ailments that I had had since childhood actually were related to the foods that I ate. I didn't know that I had a gluten sensitivity and a milk or a dairy sensitivity. And so from childhood on, I suffered from just a host of different things, stomach and digestive problems. And uh, I broke out in rashes and hives. I had severe seasonal allergies. I just had all kinds of things going on. I, I'd seen the doctor for gallbladder trouble and, and uh, joint pain. And, and so I'd just been diagnosed with a, a, a lot of things. My mother had more severe diagnoses like uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And so I, I didn't realize that the food that I ate contributed to the way that I felt. I mean, we, we think as we get older, we're just going to have aches and pains, and, and it's just the way it's going to be. And I had a car accident in 1995, and after that car accident, I developed sciatica in both legs, and it became so severe, causing daily pain and discomfort that I had to walk with a cane eventually and was looking at a wheelchair and knew that my mobility was about to be severely limited, not, not to mention suffering with the pain from it every day. And no doctor, no specialist. I saw so many different pain specialists, so many different doctors, neurologists. Nobody ever mentioned that perhaps if I changed my diet, it might help. I tried all kinds of other treatments and pain pills. And so it started with the celery juice. I began to drink the celery juice every morning. And then I switched to a plant-based diet. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for Anthony William, who writes uh, books uh, on the plant-based lifestyle. And, and I, in a week, within a week of beginning the plant-based lifestyle, I put my cane in the corner and I haven't used it since. And gradually, over the next few months, I began to experience this feeling, this, I would, I would be driving in the car, or I'd be doing something, and this feeling of euphoria would just come over me, and I would think, what is this? Why, why do I feel this way? And it finally dawned on me that I was experiencing what health felt like, what good health felt like, that I had really never experienced that from my childhood. I had had all these different uh, things going on and all of those things cleared up. I don't even have seasonal allergies anymore and uh, don't break out in rashes, don't have the headaches and the migraines and just all the little things that can make life miserable really on a day-to-day -day basis, they, they were gone. So you can, as you can imagine, I have not gone back to eating the way that I used to eat. I am still plant-based 100%. And uh, this will be the way, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. And this is the way I'll eat for the rest of my life because I love the way I feel. I don't want to go back. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels is a saying, and it's so true. And for me, it's still, there'll still be days when I just suddenly think, oh, this feels so good. I'm enjoying this so much. I, I didn't really, and I, I want other people to experience that. I, I know so many people that just don't feel good. They just struggle day to day and think, well, this is just the way it has to be. It's not. <laughs> That's right. And, and you um, really have a great story to tell about hope and about not giving up. And right. I hope for any of our viewers out there that are watching this, that they'll think about that. You may think that there's no cure. You may think that you've tried right. everything, but you may not have done that. That's right. That's right. And sometimes it really is as simple as changing what we eat. Yeah. You know, some of us might say, we don't like that type of food, or we're used to the, the things that we've always eaten. But recently, I went to an event at the Ritz-Carlton here in Naples, Florida, and they actually served a 14-course meal. There were all these chefs making everything. It was outside. It was just beautiful. And we all got done with the food and did not realize that it was all plant-based, <laughs> <Wonderful. healthy, laughs> Mediterranean-type food. And we didn't realize that. And even some of the people that said, I would never have eaten that. I would have thought I wouldn't like that. And they did like it. And I'll bet a lot of those people have changed to that now. Right. Yeah, it's it, what happens is we can use herbs and spices to season our food. And we, we find out that we don't need the fats and the the sugar and the things that we're used to. That That's really what we're used to tasting is mm -hmm. 
those things in our food. It's not the food itself. And, and our body actually gets addicted to some of that. And so we, we begin to clean up what we eat. And we find out that we can make food taste amazing by using the herbs and the spices. I, I grow my own herbs now to use those in both cooking and in teas. But it, it, it's really not a limiting diet is what some people picture that I eat salads all the time. I very rarely eat a salad. I, a few years before I changed to a plant-based diet, I expressed the desire, just kind of threw it out there, that I would really like to cook more, learn more about cooking. And that's happened. I very rarely eat out. I enjoy preparing my own foods at home. And there are all kinds of ways to prepare vegetables and fruits and grains and and beans and lentils and I don't feel like I'm deprived at all. That's wonderful. When you start to live that way, um, what goes along with that? In other words, um, are you into meditation? Do you do any yoga? Does it change some of the other things you do in life? Yes, it very much does. I think an awareness of your health and awareness of taking care of your body, it starts as an inner change that begins to be reflected in your outer life. And so, yes, I do meditation. I just recently began to do yoga again. I had actually stopped doing, I used to do Tai Chi and, and uh, Zumba, and I got to, to the point where I couldn't do that any longer because of the pain in my legs. And so I've just recently begun to do yoga again. And, and not only do I care about taking care of myself, my health, but it, it flows out to the world too. I've become much more environmentally aware. I've quit using chemicals in my cleaning products and in my shampoo and my conditioner, my dish soap. All of those are now plant-based products. And uh, I just recently quit using plastics. I'm trying to very much limit my use of, of one-use plastics. So I use a metal water bottle now instead of uh, using plastic. And it, the awareness of taking care of yourself begins to flow outward and you want to help take care of others and you want to see the world be better taken care of too. So it does raise your awareness to amazing levels of uh, what's healthy for me is healthy for everyone else and healthy for the planet too. That's a really good point that you make because when you eliminate some of those things and you start to care for the earth, you mm -hmm. know, some people aren't into that or they don't believe in things like climate right. change or all of that. Right. And yet um, here in Florida, if you would see a dolphin come ashore or one of our sea turtles and it's dead and it's because inside are plastic straws, yes. start to see what it's doing. As you say, you, you want to spread the gospel, not for just yourself, but for yeah. others and for the planet and to just take a look at this. Thank goodness some, some young children, uh, our children and grandchildren are realizing that and, and taking a yes. look at that. That's very yes, I, I believe it's so important. And yes, we're destroying the oceans with our plastics. And I don't live anywhere near the ocean, but to see those kind of uh, visual reminders of what we're doing, you know, it's easy to say, ah, it's, you know, it doesn't make any difference if I use plastics, but it, it's having a great impact on the planet, which impacts us as well. So it's, it becomes vital to take care of not only of ourselves. I, I believe it has to start with taking care of ourselves. We just don't have the awareness to take care of others and take care of the planet. If we're not first taking care of ourselves. it's, it's similar to that. You have to love yourself really before you can love fully someone else. So I think it's the same principle there, but it is so vital, so important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it is. I think it is very vital. And I actually want to explore what you said there. I'm taking notes and uh, want to ask you that afterwards. And if you notice, I removed all the plastics this morning. You're not going to find any plastics. <laughs> That's <on the> right. <laughs> and um, I love um, your whole talk about the healthy things to um, eat drink. Now, let me ask you this question. I'm reading that coffee is still good for you. Is that true? Coffee is one of those gray areas. It's a highly acidic drink, and so it can throw the body into out of balance. It, instead of being uh, more neutral or, or alkaline, it can throw it into being acidic, and 
an acidic body is more susceptible to disease. So there is some question about that. The other thing with coffee is the caffeine and uh, the caffeine, too much caffeine. We all are aware that too much caffeine is not good for the body. It can um, not only cause the jitters, but it affects our organs and, and other things. So I personally don't drink coffee. I used to be a big iced tea drinker and I no longer drink uh, regular tea either. I only drink herbal teas that I actually prepare myself from my own herbs. So okay. that's, and water. <laughs> All right. Well, before we take our break for our home audience, the coffee is going to go over <laughs> here on the shelf. I won't drink that. So um, we'll explore more with Cindy Moore when we come back. This is Level Up and this is Dan Kyoto, your host with my guest, Cindy Moore today. We'll be right back after this. If you're like most people, your thoughts tend to bounce all over the place. And when you are stressed or worried, they naturally gravitate towards the negative. Many are so accustomed to allowing negative thoughts, worry, fear, and stress to dominate their thinking, they don't even realize they're doing it. Some even feel guilty if they're not constantly thinking about their problems. Mind walking is a daily 15-minute exercise where you practice thinking on purpose while you walk. Just walk and listen as success coach Bill Mansell guides you through the mind walking exercises. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll learn how to get your mind's attention and focus your thoughts towards what's right in your life now and what you want to create in your future. Visit mindperk.com to learn more and purchase the mind walking program. We are back. You are listening to Level Up and watching Level Up. I'm Dan Kyoto, your host today. I have Cindy Moore with me. And, um, you know, the second half of the show, we ask a big question. And I just throw it out there. haven't even told you what it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to ask you that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about your career. The big question is this. You made the comment, before you love others, you have to love yourself. I thought that was just fabulous, and I'd like you to talk about that. Sure, I would love to. You know, it's a problem especially common for women, but it's, it's also happens with, with the guys that we just we reach a point, uh, teenage years often, where we become very, very critical of ourselves. We compare ourselves to others. We find ourselves lacking. We don't recognize any longer our gifts and our abilities. I think as children, we do. We, we are happy with ourselves. We see ourselves as a unique person, but we lose a lot of that in our teenage years. And then, you know, we get into adulthood and it just becomes so hard for some of us to love ourselves. And if you're not able to love yourself, it's really difficult, I believe, to fully love someone else. And you can turn those same critical eyes on others that you are used to turning on yourself. So it becomes an inner journey first. And I believe it starts with acceptance of fully accepting who we are. And uh, I did not do that until I was around 50 years old. I lived with a lot of fear in my life. And uh, at the heart of all of that was, was the fear of who I really was. I tried to spend a lot of my adult, adult life hiding and being invisible as much as I could. And I realized I didn't want to live that way anymore. So it began with fully accepting myself for who I am, exactly the way I made, exactly the way I was at that time. And it's it been an amazing journey. Uh, just began with saying, okay, this is who I am. These are my gifts. These are my quirks. These are the things that I have not liked about myself, but this is, this is all part of the package. And for the first time in my life, I really completely accepted who I was at age 50 and decided, you know, I'm going to live out of who I, who I am. A, a very wise person once told me that I needed to step up and be the person I was created to be, that I needed to inhabit that fully. And it started with loving myself, accepting myself, and really bringing a whole heart into this game of life. I was half, you know, half-hearted about it. I truly was. I, I tried to hide away parts of myself. And so this has been 
really what changed my whole life, changed my whole journey, and ultimately led to uh, the creativity that I live in now. Because there, there's a saying that says, behind your greatest fear lies your greatest gift. And uh, I found my greatest gift by going through that fear. And uh, part of going through that fear was to accept myself, love myself, really love myself, you know, that knee shaking, the way you would feel about, you know, that first love that you have for someone, it's really more of a crush when you, when you meet someone when you're young, or maybe not young, but uh, you, you fall in love. It's that kind of feeling for yourself that I do anything for you, for yourself. I mean, it's a, it's a changing, it's a life changing experience to go through that. That is wonderful. I think we should do a show just on that. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> but, but for today, I want to also take time to talk about, uh, you're talking about at the point where you love yourself and now you step into what you want to do. So talk a little bit about what your career looks like now, some of the things you're doing. All right. I am in transition. I have been a realtor for 16 years and uh, probably this is my last year to practice real estate. When I went through that time of loving myself, accepting myself, step beyond the fear and decided to just do the things that just the things that that light my face up the things that bring passion into my voice you know the thing that sets my soul on fire i had rediscovered my creativity something that i'd had since uh, childhood but it gotten shut away with a lot of other things and so i rediscovered writing uh something i had done since childhood but i had stopped and uh, I started a blog in 2014. Uh, it's called Cindy Goes Beyond. And the beyond part was to learn to go beyond my fears, my comfort zone, my limitations. And so I started that first year with doing something new every single day that I'd never done before to get me out of my comfort zone. And uh, I, I wrote daily about those experiences. And so uh, I found that I loved the writing. I loved writing the blog. The health journey kicked off a second blog called Journey with Healthy Me that started uh, three years ago. And so I have both of those blogs going now full time and uh, I love it. I am working with some brands and uh, doing some different things because of the blog. That's really how the magazine article came about as well. And uh, I love it. I love connecting with people in this way. I get emails and messages every day from people just asking, you know, how can I, how can I experience life this way? Uh, how can I change my health? Uh, you know, it's just, it's wonderful to, to know that, I can help people uh, who have questions or who are at a point in their life. Uh, not all of them are sick. Some of them are just, you know, they're in a rut. They're just tired of living life the way they've lived it, and they're looking for something different. And it all starts with, with us. You know, it starts within. It's, it's a journey that starts there, and it goes outward. So that's what I'm so excited to be sharing with people right now. That's wonderful. I love, you know, I think some people are in a rut. And mm -hmm. as we've discussed this today, Again, just as with your health, um, on the other side of poor health was good health, and yeah. it's made all the difference in the world. Yes. But what are some of those things that um, we should be doing? If you're writing, and you used to, and now you get back to that, that can be very fulfilling. And I think sometimes we forget that. Maybe we should all think about some of our hobbies, where mm -hmm. we have fun, and how could we maybe get into that down the road. Right. I Another think gentleman, um, well, actually, we were traveling on a cruise, and we went with he and his wife. My wife and I went on this cruise. And one morning, I was running outside, and I'm going along the deck, and I saw him there in a deck chair, and he had a pad and a pencil. And I looked, and I said, oh, my gosh, that's beautiful. I had no idea that you could draw. And he said, either did I. <laughs> he said, I've never never done this before, but I think I'm going to be doing it. And I also had another person in one of my sessions that we were pretending we were teaching each other to juggle. And we gave him up to five balls to juggle and he was juggling them. And in the middle of it, he said, I didn't know I could do this. So I, I really think I, I'm so glad that you jumped out there and, and try something that fulfills you now. That's excellent. 
Yeah, I think a lot of times our childhood is a good indication, you know, as, as what we enjoy doing as a child. And then, you know, we think as we grow older, well, I, I can't do that. Or sometimes we're encouraged by other people, you know, you can't follow that path. You need to do something practical or you need to do something you can make money at. But I believe you can follow your passion and, and everything else will take care of itself. That's right. Well, that's probably a good place to end. Follow your passion and everything else will take care of itself. So, Cindy, thank you so much. Uh, is there anything else you want to end with or anything else you want to tell us? No, I just appreciate the opportunity to share. And uh, I'm out there on social media and I'm busy doing things. You can find me out there. That's great. Can't wait to see what you do because you just said a while ago that you were thinking of um, ending the, your real estate practice. You weren't right. just practicing, you were fabulous. And so I know you're going to be fabulous at this too. This is very exciting. Well, thank so, you. Thank you for being on Level Up. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you, viewers, for being a part of this and to Storm Cloud and their amazing team, which puts our podcast together every month. You can now find us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and now Google Play. And you can also visit impactbydan.com and look under podcasts and you will see all of the other podcasts that we have done. So usually at the end of Level Up, we give you a little challenge and oh my goodness, there are so many things that, that we could do. But what about following our passion? Maybe thinking about that, that part of your life that maybe occasionally pops in your head but you've never done anything with that. Think about that a little bit and where that could take you. And of course, where Cindy talked about, we can be healthy and vibrant at any age. Maybe now's the time you look at your life and say, it's time to be healthy. So do pick up that article in Woman's World. Even if you're a guy, just pick it up. And, yeah, Pick it up and read that and see what it means for you. So thank you very much and cheers. cheers.